Hey y'all, I'm Anna Alexander and this is Dish About the Dish, where the foods we eat tell the stories of our lives. And right now, it is the end of July, and in my family, we would usually be celebrating at the Pacific Northwest Highland Games and Clan Gathering. Uh, but since there's a pandemic still raging around, they have canceled the games again this year. But my family is gonna recreate our own version in the backyard. It's one of the most highlights of the whole event is of course the food, which is always amazing, especially the Scottish meat pies. So I am going to attempt to make my own today. And I say attempt because I have never done this before. So this should be interesting. Uh, yeah. So meat pies, there's two main sections to them. We've got the filling and you've got the crust. So we are going to start with step one, which is the crust. Here we go. As always, I have my mise en place together for this leg of the journey. And you're gonna see maybe some ingredients you might not have before in a crust, because we're making a hot water crust. That's what you need when you're making a meat pie because you want something that's going to be able, strong enough to contain your meats and your gravies and vegetables and, and whatnot. So this recipe has come from the fabulous Miss Mary Berry herself. I will have a link to that recipe in the description down below. Um, and I'm also making quite a bit of crust because I, I don't know how much I'm going to need and I would hate to be short and have like four pies for my family of 10 that I will be feeding tomorrow. So I have here my all-purpose flour with some salt and then we have one of my least favorite ingredients on the planet, shortening. A lot, a lot of shortening. About, uh, I think it's 450 milligrams, uh, 450 grams. 450 grams to be precise. Love it. And we're going to add to this some water and you're actually going to melt this down into a liquid. Yeah, that sounds delightful. And then once this gets all melted, we will then add it to our flour. Yum, yum. Right, you want the fat melted and the water hot, but you don't necessarily need it like boiling, scalding. You just want it to kind of be all liquid. It's <laughs> so gross. This better taste amazing. So we are going to add our hot liquid to our flour and salt. Yes, it's been sifted. Yay, and well, we're gonna mix this all together. I had seen other recipes for hot water crust, but, and I don't know what the difference are between them, but this is a Mary Berry recipe. So if you're gonna make something quintessentially British, you're gonna use a Mary Berry recipe. <laughs> Normally I would stick my hands in here to finish off this last little bit. However, <laughs> this is hot. <laughs> At some point you're gonna wanna turn it onto a board to kind of help get it into its ball shape and work in that last little bit of flour. I'm gonna use my spoon for a bit because it's still pretty warm. And in case you were wondering, I did a recipe and a half of dough only because doubling it made it seem like a lot of dough. And also keep in mind, this recipe is to do one pheasant pie and I'm trying to make little tiny individual sized meat pies. Um, I would not call this a summertime even though it is the summer, a summertime recipe. Um, if you were doing this in the winter when it's super, super cold, this would be lovely. Moody, that's hot. Wow, that's hot. Ooh, that's hot. So it has mostly come together, and I am now going to set it aside to cool, and also for the gluten to kind of relax, because it has had rather a hot time in the bath, getting all jumbly. Uh, and so in the meantime, I'm gonna clean up and then we'll go to step two, which is preparing our filling. 
a traditional meat pie will have steak, kidney, perhaps even pork. But since I have family members that can't have any of that, I've elected to go with chicken. Chicken and leek to be exact, along with some onions and carrots. And uh, basically I just threw a bunch of stuff in that I thought sounded good. Seriously y'all, I totally made this up. Threw in some herbs, some chicken stock, try to make a bit of a gravy because it is the sauce that will keep your pies from being dry. Don't forget when you're making up recipes, even when you're not, taste your food. Make sure that it is seasoned properly. If not, don't be afraid to add in some more salt or pepper. Once your filling is cooked, you'll want to set it aside so it can cool down before you fill your crust. You don't want those crusts to melt before you're ready. So now we're going to assemble. So I've got my hot water crust and I am marveling that um, it's not sticking to my cutting board at all. I find that very strange and the fact that it had so much water in it for a pie crust essentially. And it's also not sticking to my rolling pin, so that's kind of a bonus. The idea is to use my muffin tins for my pies. And to make it big enough, this is the biggest thing I have. So I don't know if this is going to work. But we'll give it a whirl. Oh, oh. And you want it thick enough, but not too thick. This might be a little too thick. I, don't know. I think that's a good size. So I'll keep rolling with this. We use what we can, people. We use what we can. If you need to flatten your discs, do it between your palms so you can get them into the pie tins a lot more easily. And then once your filling is cool, your crusts are ready to go, fill up your tins. Don't forget to add some of that delicious gravy because again, you don't want them too dry. We've got our little pies filled. Now we've got to create the tops and I'm gonna use just my biscuit cutter to create these nice, round tops <laughs> and you can see I put my lip up I created a lip so I had a place to fit the little discs and pinch those sides together and yes my fingernails are getting in the way our pies are now assembled and I'm not gonna lie y'all this 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 is a lot of work it's a lot of work we've got a few more last touches to do before we put them in the oven and one of the most important ones is we need to create a vent for all the steam to go out as these bake. And we are going to put them in a 425 degree oven uh, until they're done. <laughs> I did do a test batch at, for about 35 minutes or so. We'll test those and see if that was long enough because you can the tops will look nice, but you won't know what's going on underneath. And that's the tricky part. We don't want our soggy bottoms, especially with the Mary Berry pie, res pie crust recipe. But the very last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a little egg wash over the tops, and that makes these nice and golden, a little glossy. Sometimes it gives it a little extra crispness. Here we go into the oven. Magic! Here is my tester. They look good. They look nice and kind of golden. I don't know which one to pull out first. I debated whether or not spraying these with cooking spray. I can feel along the bottom. Ooh. Well, that came out pretty much in one piece. We don't have my soggy bottoms, which are good. We got a nice golden crust. Now, the idea is that you just walk around town and you just bite into them. But it could, but, but as always with these pies, 
If they're freshly baked, the inside is molten hot, like burn your flesh hot, especially those sausage rolls. I don't know what they do. So let this get really, really, really cold, or you'll want to put it on a plate and kind of break it up and eat it with a knife and a fork. But let's, what if I want to see how this looks? Be like Paul Hollywood in Peru. Oh, look at that. Well, that looks delightful. It tastes like a meat pie. It's actually not bad. That's a lot of crust though. So, what I would do different. Mm, I think I would spray the pans first. A little cooking spray to keep them from sticking. And I would definitely give myself a bigger lip. So that way when I put the disc on top, I have enough space to like make a pretty little rim. Also, um, long fingernails um, are really difficult to do pie crust with because you just keep wanting to make little teeny tiny ovals. But other than that, I think I did all right for my first attempt. If you've made me pies before, if you saw something that you went, Anna, what? What were you doing? What were you thinking? Just give me a comment and a shout out because I do appreciate all the tips that I have been given. And if you haven't tried them before, give them a whirl. You will lose some weight from working out, let me tell you. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, hit subscribe because that does help the channel out to get seen by more people. And until next time, y'all, see you soon.